As you're well aware, we're living in unprecedented times. Join us now for today's special program. I want to spend my life mending broken people. I want to spend my life removing pain. Lord, let my words heal a heart that hurts. I want to spend. to another 3ABN Today Live. I'm Jason Bradley, and I'm so glad that you've decided to join us, whether you're watching on TV or you're on 3ABN Plus that TV or you're listening on the radio. It's great to have you here. You are a blessing, and you are a very, very important part of this ministry. We are going to be talking about naps in action. And I know you're probably saying, well, if you're taking a nap, well, how could I be in action if I'm taking a nap? It's not that kind of nap. And I assure you, they are very, very active in their community and worldwide, internationally. So here with me this evening is Dr. Anthony Paul. It's great to have you here. Same here. Very happy to be here again. Yes, and we've got your wife, Dr. Marlo Paul. It's great to have you. Thank you. You're welcome. And Pastor Humphrey, it's wonderful to have you here. Thank you. Yes, sir. And we've got Lisa Williams. It's great to have you. Praise the Lord. Excited to hear what you're going to share. And we have Jade Burrell. Did I say that right? Yes. Okay, wonderful. And we're going to dive into your role with NAPS and all that NAPS is about. But first I want to share this Bible verse and then we're going to listen and be blessed by a wonderful song. Uh, this is coming from Isaiah chapter 60 and we'll, we'll start in verse 1. It says, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth and deep darkness the people, but the Lord will arise over you and his glory will be seen upon you. At this time, I'd like for us to be blessed in song by Stephanie Dawn, and she will be singing Arise, Shine. The people in darkness, they stumble with eyes that cannot see. the glory of the sun or the rush of a stream to heal and redeem his radiance gleaming arise shine your light has come the glory of the lord has risen upon you arise shine your light has come lift up your the roar of a thousand seas awake you who sleep though the climb may be steep i call to 
to my people. I call the cry, shine, your light has come. The glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Rise, shine, your light has come. Lift up your eyes and see. beautiful message. Lift up your eyes and see. Arise, shine. I want to find out a little bit about your background, Dr. Paul. Where are you from? Uh, tell us uh, a little bit about your professional history, all of that as okay. well. Well, I was born in the beautiful island of Trinidad. Oh, nice. <laughs> nice. So you know about the roti and the doubles. And... I can make them for you too. Oh, well, I wish I would have known that at the time. <laughs> I uh, came to uh, the United States as a young man. Uh, went to Oakwood uh, College at that time. Yeah. Uh, got my uh, education and went on to get my PhD mm -hmm. and came back to work at Oakwood. And it was there that I got the vision to start what we call NAPS, which we hear about talking about. Yes. And I've been there now for about 30 years, just, just retired. Okay. Started working again. Nice. You were actually my professor at Oakwood. Oh, did I teach you anything? That, that, I'm pretty sure you did. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you did. We do have a sure. refund. We have a refund policy now. If you, if you I'll teach you anything. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, you did. <laughs> Dr. Marlo, what about you? Yes. So um, I was born and raised in Colorado. My roots do go back to Itabina, Mississippi, and that's a, another testimony nice. that we can share later. Okay. And I went uh, to Oakwood, and then I matriculated to Loma Linda Medical School where um, afterwards I did my residency in internal medicine. And long story short, God brought me back to where my roots came from to help minister yes. to my brothers and sisters in the Black Belt area. And I've never been happier. Amen. And we're going to have to dive into that a little <laughs> bit later, too. We need to know what the Black Belt is, yes. All, of, yes. all of that yes. stuff. Yes. Pastor Humphrey, uh, what's your background? Tell us a little bit about Oh, you. I have a 55-year tenure with the Seventh-day Adventist Church okay. and uh, just retired August 31, retired from, from full-time ministry. Mm -hmm. But uh, Dr. Paul has recruited me back <laughs> <laughs> uh, with, with NAPS. Yes, uh, sir. But um, I've had 13 different jobs in the Seventh-day Adventist Church and pastoring is just one of them. Yeah. But I'm very pleased to be able to now affiliate w with our NAPS organization. Amen. 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 You're never truly retired in ministry, Pastor. No, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. What about you, Lisa? Well, I was born in Toronto, Canada. Okay. And I moved to Fort Lauderdale, Florida. And then I went to Oakwood. I'm mm -hmm. a proud alumnus of Oakwood. Nice. And um, I've been a part of the ministry ever since I was a student. I'm still here. Amen. Oh, man, amen. Jay, tell us about your many years on this <laughs> planet. <laughs> well, I was born in the proud state I call Alabama. Okay. Country. 
And I've been a student at the Knapp School for six, seven years now. I love it. I love it. That's awesome. And it's great to have you here. And uh, I'm excited to hear more from you, too, a little bit later. But uh, Dr. Paul, tell, tell me a little bit about NAPS. What does NAPS stand for, uh, and why does NAPS okay. exist? NAPS, uh, the acronym NAPS represents the National Association for the Prevention of Starvation. Mm -hmm. And that's not just physical starvation, spiritual, social, psychological, yes. and physical, as, 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 as we, we do feed people around the world. Mm -hmm. We have missions all around the world. We have, I like to mention a few of them if you don't mind. Oh, we, have, we have one in Brazil where we have John and uh, Jackie is leading out in that ministry there. We have one in Madagascar. Uh, we have Rao and Michael leading out in that ministry, wow. doing a wonderful work there. We have also a uh, mission in Zambia and we have a Costa in uh, uh, I can't recall the name now, Vera, leading out in that ministry. Mm -hmm. And do I, am I forgetting any? Um, Haiti. Haiti, we mm -hmm. have Romero, and when Haiti, pray oh. for Haiti, because now we cannot really go back into Haiti. Okay. And look like we, we could in the past. Mm -hmm. But uh, then we come on right back to the Black Belt ministry, which we're gonna be talking about today. Yes. And so we have Belt to the Globe, and uh, here we are back again at home working. Right. Amen, mm -hmm. amen. So. How does NAP support the Gospel Commission? So we are, we are church supporting ministry. Mm -hmm. We go to places where there are no churches in the, in the world. Uh, we, like I said, we've been to 23 different countries. Mm -hmm. We have about 30 different branches throughout the world. What we do, we go into a country, we take the Adventist youth or any youth that we can get, train them in the gospel work and take them out to their countryside mm -hmm. to start doing work. And when we are through training them, we then empower them to do likewise. Nice. So over the years, over the 25 years we've been doing uh, foreign ministry, we have over 25,000 individuals added to the Seventh-day Adventist Amen. Church. Wow. Wow, that's powerful. That's powerful. And Dr. Marlowe, how did you become involved with NAPS? Like, when was it at that point that it was like, oh, I need to be involved? <laughs> well, I think it probably started at home. My uh, mom was mm -hmm. always instrumental in making sure that we put others first, that we serve. She was in charge of Dorcas, feeding the, the hungry, clothing the naked. So when I stumbled upon this organization, NAPS, I said, wow. Mm -hmm. This is what I've been raised to do, and God put that passion in, in my heart because of my mom, who's a God-fearing woman. Yeah. And so it was just wonderful to find an avenue by which things that we had been brought up to do, we could mm -hmm. express and continue to do. Amen, amen. Yeah. Now, we've talked about the black belt briefly. We mentioned that, right? But what is the condition of the black belt, and what is the black belt? Okay. Well, the black belt, now I'm from Trinidad, and okay. usually my escape over the years was, don't ask me, I'm not from here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I've been drafted into this, in, in this work by, uh, we'll come to that, my, my dear, uh, adorable pastor over here, Pastor Humphrey. But the black belt is a region mm -hmm. that stretches from uh, the Mississippi Delta, way throughout uh, uh, Louisiana, through... Uh, Mississippi, Alabama, into Georgia. Yeah. It's a 50, 100 mile wide strip of land. The soil is black. The people are predominantly black. Okay. And that's where the cotton plantations were over the years. Oh, wow. Yeah, and, and so it's a place where when you, when you superimpose poverty, mm -hmm. uh, hypertension, diabetes, and now COVID, yes. this place lights up in the United States. Yes. So the, high, the high frequency. Mm -hmm. And so my dear uh, professor right here, I call him my professor, yeah, I love him very much, love him a lot. Yeah. Uh, he's been our CEO over the many years for NAPS, uh, and he'll tell you how we was drafted into that. And he's the one that has been provoking us over the years that we have built to the globe with this work, but it's a work undone here. So I, I, wanna, I, wanna, I wanna send the torch over to him Okay. The experience of, because he's a, he has a wealth of knowledge and I bow to him. I don't worship him, <laughs> but I bow and yield to him. Uh, uh, well, Jason, I uh, got involved with NAPS uh, in 1997. Wow. Um, I was a contented de departmental leader of the adult ministries 
department of the North American Division mm -hmm. when uh, Dr. Delbert Baker came to my office one day and said, I'd like for you to come to Oakwood and uh, be the advancement and development vice president. Yes. Well, you know, if you say Oakwood, everybody wants to work at Oakwood. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I saw a vision for that, and so I accepted and uh, went to Oakwood by his, uh, at his in invitation. Mm -hmm. uh, the job that I had was to cultivate donors. Okay. Uh, to identify donors and cultivate donors and and uh, and bring them into the fold of Oakwood uh, so that they would contribute. <laughs> yes. And uh, uh, we got some to do it. Mm -hmm. Well, on one particular alumni homecoming, one of our main donors, in fact, I th it was the top donor, doctor, I believe, uh, the, said, said, I'm going to come and visit Oakwood. Okay. So it was my job mm -hmm. to take him on the tour. Uh-huh. And uh, I showed him a number of things, but then I said, I'm going to show him the Department of, of, of Biolo Bio Biological Sciences. Okay. Because they had just discovered through their research something that had to do with uh, SIDS. Southern Infant mm. Death Syndrome, mm -hmm. and it was published nationally. I said, he'll like that because uh, he was a MD himself. Okay. We went down there to Oakwood. He walked right past the drawings and the, the, the pictures. Publications. Yeah, he, he walked right past that, and Dr. Paul invited him, us into his office. Mm-hmm. Well, when we got in there, Doc went under the desk and pulled out this somewhat besmirched uh, drawing. Okay. He rolled it out, <laughs> and he said, this is a school I want to build in Haiti. Wow. <laughs> well, I said, well, you know, we're wasting time here. We need to get on with, with something important. <laughs> this is our top donor here. Mm -hmm. But the donor's eyes lit up. Mm -hmm. And he said, and it shocked me, he said, you know, this is something I believe my mother would want me to give to. Wow. <laughs> well, I said, oh, my goodness. I thought we were going to get some computers out of him uh, or, or some scholarships or something. And he wants to give to this. Mm. And lo and behold, he did. He mm -hmm. gave thousands of dollars to... Uh, Dr. Paul's school mm -hmm. in, was it La Chapelle? La Chapelle, Haiti. La Chapelle, Haiti. Nice. Mm. And um, uh, that donor has passed on now, but uh, it was an inspiration to me mm -hmm. to see someone like him be interested in a little school yes. in Haiti. Mm -hmm. But Nonetheless, uh, Dr. Paul said, I'm, I've, got to, I've got to get a hold of Humphrey uh -huh. because if he can get money <laughs> to flow like that, I need him to be with me. Mm -hmm, to support the mission. Su support the mission. Yes. And see, he had a one-up on me because my daughter had been in the NAPS program since way, way back yes. uh, bef uh, before I got down there. Mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> I tell you, uh, we joined the NAPS program and began to travel the world. Mm -hmm. I was amazed at these young people when uh, 911 ha happened. Uh, within 48 hours, these young people were boarding vans with their shovels and their instruments wow. and going to New York City. And there at Ground Zero mm -hmm. uh, in lower Manhattan, they played their instruments and comforted the people. Yes. Went to the 
the, the firehouses and hugged the men who had lost their compatriots in, in, in the fire. And I said, this is something special. Mm -hmm. This is a special organization that we have here. Then I saw them at, at, at uh, Sandy Hook. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I saw them there at CNN picked up on it. And uh, uh, all over the world, they have gone to spread the message yes. of Christ. Yes. But I said, now, what could I do mm -hmm. to encourage them or direct them? I'm now the chairman of the board, yes. big time. Mm -hmm. Okay, what can I do to, uh, uh, to, to, to help them? And, and, and I thought about the Southern work. Mm -hmm. I thought about words that Ellen White said. Yes in volume seven, mm -hmm. and those words go like this. The proclamation that freed the slaves of the Southern states opened doors through which Christian workers should have entered to tell the story of the love of God. This field uh, uh, has precious jewels. Mm -hmm. She says, mm -hmm. and she said, these jewels will shine out brightly if they're found. Well, we all knew that no one had found any jewels in the southern field mm -hmm. of, uh, for a long time. Yes. And so I put that thought into Doc's head mm -hmm. that we should work for our young people and our older people and our poor people here. Yes. Uh, in America, mm -hmm. and the three poorest counties in America mm -hmm. are Greene County, Hale County, Hale County, Sumter. and Sumter County. Okay. Mm -hmm. And this thing caught on to, to Doc's coattails and wouldn't let him go. Wow, that's <laughs> beautiful. That's beautiful because you know you, you saw the need. Mm -hmm. And then you met that need, right? You were passionate about meeting that need for Christ. I love that. Mm -hmm. You know, Doc, why don't you tell me a little bit about the, the refugee relief? Yes, yes. So we, as, as my friend was mentioning, when we see a need, when God exposed a need to us, mm -hmm. we, are, we are compelled to respond to it. Not yes. just hearers, not just seers, but doers. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, a couple of months ago, there was this refugee at the border situation mm -hmm. and things that come back to our mind, you know, the refugee, the stranger at the gate. And so we started reading and looking and then we, mm -hmm. we kind of like say, we have to act and do yes. something. Yeah. So we called around to see how we, what we can do to at least do something, show a presence. One thing we do, Jason, is when there's a need, that's like you mentioned about 911 mm -hmm. or hurricanes or earthquakes, we go. Yes. If God doesn't want us, you stop us. Mm -hmm. Prayer is no substitute for work. Yes. So we like God to stop us rather than to look for a sign to go mm -hmm. because the gospel says go. Mm -hmm. And so my wife and I and another person, Cynthia, we took off yes. heading to the border. And so we got to Texas mm -hmm. okay. and uh, we showed up at this huge building. It was like a corporate office and they said this is where they're housing the Haitian refugees. And mm -hmm. so we stood there and we um, were trying to speak to people going in and out because they wouldn't let everybody in. Mm. And then uh, we're praying. We're like, Lord, we know you sent us here for a reason, Lord. We want to be used by you. And then after that, these police officers came and said, no loitering, get off the premises. Wow. Yeah. Real aggressive. Yeah, you don't, yes. you don't, yes. you don't yes. speak to God's people like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, so I, they were about to leave, so I stepped up. I said, no, no. I said, do you know who we are? <laughs> uh, and, and what did he say to you? <laughs> said, no, I said, we are naps, and, we're, and we, we are here to help. And here's a brochure. Yeah. He took it and went back inside with it. So then maybe just 30 seconds later, this lady opened the door and said, Naps, welcome. Come on in. <laughs> wow. The president of the organization is meeting at the table in the conference room. Have a seat. Go right ahead. <laughs> so we were right there with these people, president, 
lawyers and um, we were speaking to them saying what our purpose was that we were here to help in any way possible and he said well actually we do have a lot of refugees that we had to put away at the hotel because they mm -hmm. have COVID and uh -huh. nobody really wants to work with them would mm -hmm. you guys mind working with them no mm -hmm. you know they have no food they need to be treated and they have to test negative twice before they can go to their sponsors okay. so we said yes what a blessing what a blessing <laughs> an open door yeah. so we went there and we started working with them and then that's when we discovered there was a family whose sponsors had said, no, we're not taking you anymore. So they had nowhere to go, okay. which means they would have been sent back. Mm -hmm. And we were hearing their story and it just um, brings tears to my eyes of what they went through walking with a seven month old and a five year old for 14 days, getting robbed, running out of food. The wife said she was climbing up the mountain with her seven month old and her husband was with the five year old and she saw this man fall off the mountain and she started trembling because she said, is that my husband? Is that my husband? Yeah. And when she finally made it to the top, she saw her husband and she just broke down crying. Mm -hmm. And the little boy's feet, they were so swollen. It was so sad. And so we were able to meet with them. And I think we have a picture of that. We were meet, able to meet with them in the hotel. And um, uh, my husband explained to them who yeah, we were. Right, mm -hmm. and to explain to them that we can take them with, yeah, yeah Andrew White talks about the freed slave, if they run away, don't turn them back to their master. Okay. So here we are with this family needed help. Mm -hmm. And the condition is that they have to go to some process and there was no process for them to go through. Okay. So we err on the side of mercy. Yeah. We took them with us. Mm -hmm. And then we beg for mercy. Mm -hmm. And so we, after we took them, my dear wife. God worked it yeah. out. He worked wow. it out. Even though they were supposed to be in Arizona, we took them to the immigration office in Birmingham. They switched everything over. Um, they became interested in who we were and our religion. So we started giving them Bible studies. Mm -hmm. And the husband, he's actually a welder. So he contributed greatly to the Southern work because we had a wow. lot of construction that we had to do. And then his wife, she loved to cook. So mm -hmm. she helped with our uh, elementary school and cooking. And um, uh, they decided to accept Jesus. Mm -hmm. Praise mm -hmm. God. And they got baptized. I believe we have a picture of them getting baptized. We have a picture of, yes, that's at the church. We have a nice. picture of their little boy in Nall at school learning to, to build. And um, it's just they've been truly a blessing to our ministry. Mm -hmm. A lot of times we think we're going to help people. And it turns out that God swaps it and we get the huge blessing and yes. my husband always reminds us we'll be judged by the golden rule do unto others as you would have them do unto you yeah. and um it's, it's it was truly a blessing mm -hmm. we also have a video and yes. i really want to check that video out it's the refugee relief is the welder yes so let's, let's yes. take a look at that now yes Bon travail. Okay. <laughs> bon travail. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Wow. So yes. To, yeah, add, add to that. What, yes. what did we just see there? So as, as Dr. Marlowe was saying that uh, when we go out to save others, we're probably saving ourselves. We in dying need of workers. And here this gentleman is a professional welder. What he was just making, there's a big giant pot because there's a lot of starvation in the area and we need bigger pots to feed people. Mm. Now that place that we talk about the southern area where the slaves once existed, there's a, the interesting story, a history. And my historian friend, have a, he have a juxtaposition of the emancipation and the birth of the church. Could he briefly give us a little background on that? Yes, the, in 1863, okay. Uh, the Emancipation Proclamation, uh, Abraham Lincoln freed the slaves in the border states. Mm -hmm. Also what happened in 1863, the Seventh-day Adventist Church was organized officially wow. and registered. Okay. And so I have made the con connection that uh, this was God's answer to the remedy for slavery. Hmm. 
to help people out of slavery. The diet. Yes. The rest. Mm -hmm. And so forth and so on. Uh, it was amazing the things that needed to be done, but they had not been done. Mm -hmm. And so in uh, 1891, I believe it was, Ellen White spoke at the general conference session on a subject, our duty to the colored people. Hmm. And in that speech, she told the brethren what they were doing wrong mm. and why they should, should have already been well on their way to assisting this poor, wretched group of people in the back black belt. Mm. And uh, the Emancipation Proclamation is mentioned in Volume 7. Oh, wow. Volume 7 of, uh, the, of the testimonies. She says, the proclamation that freed the slaves in the South opened doors through which Christian workers should have entered to tell the story of love of the love of God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, mm -hmm. and so there is a, a, a tremendous, I don't believe it's a coincidence mm -hmm. that the Adventist church was birthed during the time, during that tumultuous time. Mm -hmm. okay. so, and that is where our work came in. And the institution of the wellness center, which is sanitarium yes. and a school, talk about jewels. That's one of the jewels right nice. there that came to bright light. Little so Jay. we talk about what happened, how we got about that property in Salerno. Yes, so this is an amazing story. Yeah. So mm -hmm. um, pa with Pastor Humphrey urging us, come on, the Southern work, the Southern work, it's a work undone. It's a work undone. There are uh, 30 counties mm -hmm. um, that have no Adventist church representation. Wow. Very poor, 80% of most of those counties are mm -hmm. African American. So it's a dark area spiritually. Yes. Um, also educationally, most of the schools are failing. Medically, um, they have to drive hours sometimes to get medical attention. Mm -hmm. Young people dying of heart attack, stroke, hypertension. And a lot of them are, have a, fa a trust issue mm -hmm. yes. with doctors. Mm -hmm. And so we're running into all of this and uh, God is saying, go. So we went and we toured the Black Belt area mm -hmm. and we saw some land that looked like it was possible for sale. So we, we prayed about it, contacted the individual. He said, yes, it's for sale. At that time, I was still practicing in Madison. And so um, while I was there, I asked this lady, she's a patient of mine, she's no longer with us, and I said, um, where are you from? She said, oh, baby, you wouldn't know. And I said, just tell me. She said, a place in Hale County. And I oh. said, well, where in Hale County? She goes, oh, it's a place called Sawyerville. How old was she? She was 92. Wow. Now, the place that Knapps had purchased, that God led us to purchase for the ministry to start the Black Belt Ministry was in Sawyerville. I said, where in wow. Sawyerville? She said, baby, on 38 and 20, 28 and 35. And I said, guess what? I said, because she knew about naps. And yeah. I told her what God had led us to do. She started crying and she oh. jumped out of her seat. And she said, God is so good. He had given my grandfather a vision mm -hmm. that one day that land would be used as a life for the community. But when we sold it to the hunters, we gave up all hope. But God has allowed me to see it. Mm -hmm. And then she proceeded to tell us where the wells were. Mm -hmm. Now, this is three and a half hours away from where the land is mm. that she grew up on. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so we knew that that was God giving us that kiss saying, yes, mm -hmm. this is where I want you guys to be. This is your job now. This is your duty. Hey, so tell us some man. of the work that you're doing. Here. So yes, so what we've been doing is we have a clinic. Okay. And so people can come there whether they have insurance or not. Uh -huh. We also have a wellness center. And our prayer is for every session that God allows us to have at least two, three people from the community, uh -huh. if not everybody, at that session. And whether they can pay or not. And that God will keep the lights on and, and the water running as long as we keep it spiritual. He's got everything else in Amen. control. And it's been wonderful because we've been able to minister greatly to the community. We were holding monthly Bible studies at the wellness center at our house. And we'd have 30, 40 people 
that would sometimes be there. Mm -hmm. um, not Adventists, but they were hungering for the gospel. Yeah. But the medical work was the wedge. So we have a uh, medicinal herbal farm. And what we would do is we would put together different things to help them and teach them mm -hmm. about you know what this is, what this plant is, what it can do, and t educate them. So we would always um, do that once a month. Yeah. And so one day um, there's this lady and she came and she said, I just got a testimony. Mm. Uh, those herbs you all showed me about, they helped me. They helped me a lot. Mm -hmm. Help with my pain, help me with my energy. And she's like, and I told my boss about it. And she said, well, how much did they charge you? And I said, well, they didn't charge me anything. And she said, well, will they take a donation? She said, no, they don't take any money. So then my husband. <laughs> yeah, I said, whoa, 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 lady. Slow down. <laughs> we don't take money from you. Yeah. <laughs> but we need money to run this operation. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, she's like, oh, OK, well, I'll talk to my boss and let her know. Mm -hmm. And so she spoke to her boss. And she said, boss, I think, I think um, they're one of you's people. And so her boss said, what do you mean? She's like, well, we offered to help them on the farm, on, but they don't work on Saturdays. Uh, so her, her boss happened to be um, Stephanie, okay. Stephanie McElroy. It's the <laughs> McElroy family, and they are Adventists. Okay. And they live in Sumter County, part-time <laughs> Sumter County and in Tennessee. And so Stephanie said, there's Adventists in this county? Because there's no church there. Yeah. She couldn't believe it. And she said, and doctors? She said, I really would like to meet them. So unbeknownst to us, she and her husband had been praying and saying, Lord, this is a work undone in the Southern field in the Black Belt. We mm -hmm. want to help finish this work. They were even going to go to Oakwood and try to recruit a couple to settle down there and sponsor them. But then unbeknownst to them, God had already sent naps. And through this precious handmaid, he connected us. Wow. And ever since then, we have been working together to push the battle to the gates. Yeah. We have uh, I think a video of them where they've joined, they join us on outreach, community service projects. Mm -hmm. And um, as Pastor Humphrey said, Ellen White said back in the day, she admonished the church to do it. It wasn't quite done. Oakwood, do it. Mm -hmm. Wasn't quite done. So he's bringing us back together again yeah. saying, let's get this undone work finished. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know, the beautiful thing is how God orders our steps, yes. right? And how he prepares the way and opens the door and connects the people Amen. to co-labor together with him. I mean, that that is incredible. I want to find out a little bit about Cuba, too, because yes. you're active in Cuba. Can you share, share a little bit about Cuba? Yeah. So before we get to the video, so we have these stations around the Black Belt. Well, okay. let me back up a little bit what happened, Jason, mm -hmm. is that a tornado came through some time back, and you probably know about it because you yes. three have been help us to gather some funds for that purpose yeah. to rebuild. A tornado came through and took out our school, her school, took out four houses that were under construction, almost finished, wow. and uh, just put, set us back mm -hmm. greatly. Then we had a, a, a friend from California send some money in the uh, Farley's. And then we are able to do some work. And then we have another Mecca Aurois again. We want to keep calling their name because they are blessed and they are a blessing. Mm -hmm. Man, and amen. so while we were constructing, I had a vision one morning. And that vision was to advance the work out from the, the, our center and spread it throughout the Black Belt. Okay. And I'm saying, why, Lord, you're giving me a vision like that when we are <laughs> under rubbles? Yes. And yes. So, so we had a plan. We had a little plan set up again, a little drawing. Mm -hmm. And then that morning, uh, Jay, my good friend, I love him. He's a, he's a man of God he, because the Lord speak, spoke to him. Yes. He texted me that morning uh, and said, what is your vision? Hmm. <laughs> Let me know your vision. And so we went right away and said, we drop our vision of we want to plant families throughout the Black Belt, yes. five acres, a house. We want a medical mobile unit. Mm -hmm. We want a truck. A tractor a to tractor create a community garden for, for each everyone. of those different nice. spots. We had a wish list and we had something that NAPS will put in that we will contribute because my wife and I were the main contributors to NAPS mm -hmm. before this situation. And so we presented the proposal to the family. And after two days, uh, he wrote back, not only did they fund 
the request for those items, but our dream, our wish list was mm -hmm. also funded. Uh, so at this time, we're saying to you, we're not here to raise funds. Mm -hmm. We're not here. God has taken care of that now. For seven years, we labored. Yes. Now the time has come just to find workers to work. Mm -hmm. And we are saying to your listeners, if you are about to write a check to NAPS, send 80% to 3ABN. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, 80% of that to 3 of you. Wow. Because that's unusual, right? Yeah, that is unusual. Yeah. I'm, just, I'm speechless over here. I don't know what to say. But yeah. God loves these people, and it's, he loves these people, and there's a work undone. And she said it's a stain. There was a, there was a reading that you had there. About, yes, this yeah. is in Testimonies, Volume 7. It says, The Lord is grieved by the woe in the southern field. Christ has wept at the sight of this woe. Angels have hushed the music of their harps as they have looked upon a people unable because of their past slavery to help themselves. And yet those in whose hands God has placed the torch of truth mm -hmm. kindled from the divine altar have not realized that to them is given the work of carrying the light to this sin darkened field. There are those who have turned away from the work of rescuing the downtrodden, the degraded, refusing to help the helpless. Let the servants of God begin at once to redeem their neglect, that the dark stain on their record may be wiped out. Wow. Have mercy, Lord. He's giving us a chance to, to wipe out that dark stain. Yes. 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 To wipe the tears of Jesus. Yes. yes. And you talk about the Southern work and the medical work. That yes, yes. I, I, I want to transition to Lisa. Yes. Lisa is sitting over here yes. and I know she wants to tell us about some outreach. Yes. What's going on with outreach, Lisa? God has really blessed us to be able to reach the children in mm -hmm. the community. And we know that by reaching the children, we reach the parents, we reach the home, we reach the community. Yes. And um, when COVID hit, NAPS is a very active ministry. Mm -hmm. Every day we're doing something, yes. I'm doing three or four things at one time. Mm -hmm. And when COVID hit, it was kind of like, man, what do we do? How are we going to reach these people during these situations? So we started to visit. We wore a mask and we have our, we did what, our protective gear. Mm -hmm. And we went out into the community. We started visiting communities. And we found this young lady and she was with all these little children. Yes. Said, she looked like she needs some help. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we decided that we were gonna come visit her. And ever since then, so many testimonies and miracles took yes. place. Yes. Um, the children that are in the community, when you knock on their door, mm -hmm. you can smell the weed. Oh, at the wow. door, at wow. the door. Yeah. Sometimes the kids would come to our program mm -hmm. and they're filled with urine. Mm. You can smell the urine even before the child comes on your lap. Wow. When we would make spaghetti for them, mm -hmm. the plate is empty. Mm. This, is, this is America. Mm -hmm. And what if we hadn't gone, yes. who was going to take care of the kids? Yes. So we have every Saturday, we would go into the community, kind of do like a branch Sabbath school and teach the children about God's love. Amen. And in the next session, you're going to hear the testimonies of the kids coming to our school and having a total reformation and transformation. You're going to hear that testimony. Mm -hmm. But I just feel so unworthy that God chose me, chose us mm -hmm. to reach yeah. these children. And I'm just so glad That's there powerful. are still precious jewels yeah. in the southern field. Mm -hmm. And God has chosen us to be able to reach out to them. Amen. Amen. I think you have that picture with you with, yeah. with you when she was, because you talk about that. Well, um, a few years back when we were um, in the community, we went to a boys and girls club. Okay. And I remember seeing this little girl, it's Jade in the pink. Mm -hmm. She would sing, um, we were teaching about creation. Mm -hmm. And I think she was like five or six. She learned the whole creation song in like <laughs> 15 minutes. And I'm like, who is this wow. little girl? How does she know all of this? <laughs> and we never knew 
that she would be that precious jewel that was yeah. going to be a part of our lives, a part of our family. Jade yeah. was at one of those kids' programs, mm. and now she's a part of us. She has accepted the faith. She is a warrior for Christ. She's yeah. out there feeding the kids and um, reading them and teaching them about the love of God. Yes. She has been an inspiration to us, mm -hmm. and I just praise God that we went. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. You know, I can, as I look at Jade, I see like her countenance, mm -hmm. you know, you can tell that she, she loves the Lord. Yes. Amen. Yes. Yes. Amen. yes, she does. And that makes a huge difference. And I, I know that you're very passionate about yes. what you do. And I know all yeah. of you are passionate yeah. about what you do. You've, you've dedicated your, your life mm -hmm. to this work mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and that's powerful. You probably, before we move on, you probably talk about the, uh, the Christmas party or? The, um, okay. Yes, so we we were able to do a wonderful outreach in, during Christmas. It's oh, nice. in a village called Jenna. Okay. It's a dirt road. Okay. And um, we got together um, with the McElroys. We came together as a, a family and a group. And it was beautiful, gathered all the children. Mm -hmm. And um, as Lisa says, if you were to, if we were to give you a tour of the Black Belt, you would not believe you're in the United States. Oh, wow. And so the area that we went, they have sewage just running open in the back of their house. The children, they don't always have clothes, socks, shoes. Um, mm. And so there's this wonderful, we had such a wonderful time. We did the story of the lost sheep and how much yeah. Jesus loves you and sang songs with them. And I believe there's a, mm. vi a video uh, of our outreach when we were in Cuba. Nice, let's take a look at that video right now.
That video just proves what I already know is, is that NAPS is extremely active in communities uh, around the world. And, yeah. and that's powerful. But that wasn't Cuba, though, no, right? No, that was Jenna, and that's my fault. I'm okay. sorry, I want to correct that. That's <laughs> Jenna, Alabama, and Stephanie McElroy had requested that we do that because she said, you know, the routine of just giving gifts to p your own family members during Christmas, it takes away what the meaning of Jesus and his sacrifice really meant. And so that is what sparked that mission yeah. in Jenna, Alabama. Yes, in Jenna, <laughs> Alabama. I love it. All right. Pastor Humphrey, why don't you tell us a little bit about what took place in Cuba. This is not Cuba in the West Indies. Okay. 90 miles offshore. This is Cuba, <laughs> Alabama. Cuba, gotcha. Alabama. We were out in, in hunt for some land that we wanted to place a family on there and, and have a wellness center or something. And so we took with us uh, Cody McElroy, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. who is the, uh, the, the, the son of uh, uh, Mr. McElroy, who okay. owns a trucking company. Mm -hmm. And um, as we rode up the road, mm -hmm. we found the sign, 20 acres. Yes. But we said, let's go a little further okay. to the end of the road. Mm -hmm. And when we got down to the end of the road, there was a couple, a black couple, picking greens okay. in their garden. Hmm. So Doc said, let's stop and make friends with them. So we, we purchased some, some greens mm -hmm. and we began to talk okay. about uh, uh, the black belt. Yes. Well. As it turns out, the... Uh, I introduced everyone. Yes, that's right. <laughs> you, he introduced everyone, and when, when he got to uh, Cody McElroy, he introduced him. Okay. And so the lady in the garden said, is that so-and-so McElroy's son? Yes. And lo and behold, it was. And she said, he used to bring Christmas gifts to us, or his grand grandfather. Grand, uh -huh. Yeah. Every Christmas. Christmas. Wow. wow. That's beautiful. Yeah. So we actually have a video, and I want us to go to that video where we're going we're gonna to see some very interesting things taking place. Okay. Let's check that video out right now. that praise and God. Yeah, I loved it. I yes. loved that, that lady poured her heart out. She's mm -hmm. like pouring her alabaster bucks out of that Cody fella. And I think it was that, that to me is the most precious thing that you can give someone is gratitude. Yes. You know, we need to be more grateful. Mm -hmm. And I think, uh, I think 
Cody got some life that day. We all got rebirth yes. that. You got a rebirth from that also. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yes. So, you know, with that, like, so you're praising the Lord. You guys have been doing medical missionary work. You've been impacting the, the black belt. Um, how does that make you feel in terms of your faith? Mm -hmm. What does that do for your faith, Dr. Marlowe? Mm -hmm. Yes, it, it um, helps us, well, for me personally, uh -huh. it reminds me that we're not in this alone. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that whatever we need, no matter what it is, strength, wisdom, uh -huh. more love in our hearts, because we are doing what God has asked us to do, He will supply it for us. Uh -huh. And we learn a lot from the people that we're ministering to also. They teach us a lot. They love the Lord in the black belt. It's the Bible belt too. Yes. And they teach us a lot. And so we learn how to be non-judgmental, how to love unconditionally, mm -hmm. and that this earth is not our home and that there's not a lot of time left. Amen. So we need to use every moment. At the end, we don't want to say, I could have done more, Lord. Yes. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, we want to say, Lord, help us to do all we can do now. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that's why naps acts with a sense of urgency. Yes. 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 Dr. Paul, what has it done for your faith? You're the president and founder of NAPS. Well, I think without, without works, your faith will wean. Mm. Mm. And to me, this is my life. I, I, people say, well, you haven't been on a vacation. You need some, you need some, you need some you time. You need some, and we try to tell people, this is, this is our joy. This is not, yeah. in the morning when I wake up and we have a, a mission to do, I'm happy and I'm rejuvenated. Uh, here I am, I've never been on any medication. I can still run five miles in a minute. Not a minute, but. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say five miles in a minute. <laughs> it might be the fastest I'll respond in, the world. in a minute. I'll respond in a minute. But uh, this is the joy of life. There's no greater joy than serving. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And I'm so grateful for the service. And especially that. now, Jason, now mm -hmm. with the COVID situation that we are able, because God has blessed us, to go into the community. We are getting calls every, every day. day. Yes. We have to go in and treat people. This is a time for the church, for us to rise and shine. Mm -hmm. God has blessed us with his health message. Amen. And we are ready, always ready to go. Amen, and I love that, always ready to go. I can't believe this first hour has gone by so fast. In just a moment, we're gonna be playing a, a little musical chairs. We'll have some more guests coming on. So don't go anywhere, tell your friends to tune in, and we'll see you shortly after this break. Happy that you stuck around. We've got some more guests out here. No strangers to 3ABN, though. We have Tori Price. Tori, it's great to have you here. Glad to be here. We have your wife, Darla. It's yes. great to have you here, Darla. And then we have Dwayne mm -hmm. Williams. It's yes. great to have you here. And Jade, you stuck with us. <laughs> I love it, Jade. We want to hear from you this second hour, too. You didn't, you didn't get away. You didn't slip away. We want to hear a little bit more from you, too, in the second hour. And before, you know, we start diving into everything in this second hour, we're going to be blessed in song by Stephanie Dawn, and she's going to be singing in times like these. Oh 
such a blessing. I neglected to mention that Pastor John Lomakang, my pastor, was singing a duet with Stephanie Dawn. That was a, a beautiful song. Mm -hmm. uh, Tori, tell me a little bit about your role, your position with NAPS and uh, what all that entails, because okay. you're, you're a busy guy. <laughs> no problem. I think that's one of the joys of a small nonprofit is uh, you think you're wearing one hat, you lift it up, there's about 20 more under there. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, and right now, my goal is I'm focused on the donor relations aspect of things as well as communication, so <laughs> website, social media, those types of things. I've been with NAP since 1999. Wow. Uh, it's been a bit of a while, <laughs> okay. uh, but it's been a wonderful experience, and I praise the Lord for my time with NAPS. Amen, amen. And how did you come to learn of NAPS? Okay, it was, I was in school in Huntsville, and uh, while I was walking around, I saw a picture, and I saw people doing mission work. Yeah. And um, ever since I was a kid, I would look, you know, Sabbath school time, mm -hmm. they tell the mission stories, and I say, man, that'd be great to be able to do that type of work, but I'm, I'm, I'm a broke boy from Chicago. There's, <laughs> I'm not able to do all of that. Uh, and so, uh, but the Lord blessed, I inquired about the picture and they told me that it was naps and the work that happens. And I said, what, right here? Yes. I, can do th I can do this work? I'm seeing other people do it. And uh, from that point on, I was hooked just in the overall experience. Amen, amen. What about you, Darla? Well, uh, I am the Director of Operations and I'm also serving as the NAPS Academy Principal. Nice. Uh, and I'm also a dorm parent, so you'll hear a little bit about that later. Uh, I, I just love serving the Lord. The way I heard about NAPS is I had come, I was trying to decide what school I was going to go to. And I remember walking in a church and they were talking about, you know, different schools, different things like that. But then they showed a NAPS video. Hmm. And when I saw the NAPS video, I was like, I, yeah, I love school, but whatever this is, I want to do this. Mm 
Yeah. And that was back in the year 2000. And I, I got involved. I, I've been able to travel with the group to so many different places, seeing lives impacted for eternity. And, uh, and now I'm, you know, I'm here, you know, this is yes. my life. There's no other life but ministry for me. So. Amen, amen, amen. What about you, Dwayne? Oh, wow. Um, at NAPS, I'm actually over the engineering of, you know, developmenting of the physical plant and, and also within the administrative office. <laughs> How do I came to NAPS? It's so funny because it's 3 ABN. Oh, really? <laughs> yes, wow. this was wow. back in 2000 and Four, oh, somewhere around here. <laughs> um, they were featured on um, one of one three ABN's program, and it. I was like, man, it'd be how oh, nice of I can do that one of these days. Yes. And long story, my wife was on the first hour, and so she decided to go to Oakwood University, and I'm like, hey, check out three um, naps. Yes. And she and, my, and another friend of ours, and, and, and every day she would be like calling me back like, hey, this is what we're doing. And I was like, yeah, I know, but you know, because I saw what they did on the, the program. Mm -hmm. And it so happened that that year when she went there, NAPS had a mission in, the, in our home state of Florida. Okay. And in Florida, we were I just like, oh, opportunity to volunteer? go and then from there on it's history <laughs> wow wow that's beautiful and Jade we heard about your involvement but we are gonna hear from you a little bit later you're gonna share some of your experiences right yes sir. okay oh, <laughs> so, I love that Jade that's that's wonderful I'm looking forward to hearing all about that and uh, Tori so tell me a little bit about what's new with naps what's what's been going on in, in the medical arena? okay Yes, great question. Uh, we've actually been expanding lately. <laughs> Everywhere we go, as Dr. Paul said earlier, over 25,000 individuals have accepted the faith. Wow. And uh, we praise God for that. So wherever we go and when we're talking, people say, well, you should teach us, train us how to do these things. Mm -hmm. This would be great. Mm -hmm. And so um, our team felt, okay, we need to start a medical missionary training school. And so that's where GEMS was started. It's the Global Evangelism and Medical Missionary School. Wow. Uh, GEMS. And it's been a wonderful experience seeing young people come in yes. and they start to learn mm -hmm. about the natural remedies that are around us. And what's great is it's not just book, it's practical. Mm -hmm. So you're there in the garden learning these herbs. Dr. Paul, he's into plant science, like that's his PhD. Mm -hmm. So he knows what these herbs are good for. Mm -hmm. And he's able to take you out there, show you the different methods of preparing them. Nice. But if you just have an herb, that's not enough. Where are you getting this herb from? So we have to learn about how do we go from seed all the way to harvest. Wow. So our gym students get to go out there. Our medical missionary students are learning how to drive a tractor. Mm -hmm. They get to go through the whole process of preparing the ground and really uh, working with the team. Mm -hmm. And even now we're in the process of building a hoop house. Uh, so that way we're able to lengthen the amount of time that we're able to produce these herbs. Wow. So it's, it's been a wonderful experience and the students are enjoying it mm -hmm. because it's now taking what they've learned and making it practical. And, and yes. I, I want to add to that with the, the hoop house, it's actually mm -hmm. hoop houses. Yeah, uh, <laughs> there's yes. multiple um, hoop houses being built. And the main objective of everything that is being done is how can we support the Gospel Commission? How can we use every means yeah. to reach a soul for Christ? Mm -hmm. And so even those plants, it's not so we have a lot of, you know, plants or, you know, for ourselves, but how can we use this to touch a heart? Yes. And uh, it kind of reminds me a, a little bit about like, um, even with our school, I know we're about to get to that, but like with our school, even though we started with gyms. Yes. When NAPS first started working in that community, mm -hmm. we knew we had to do something more and the school, it's Nala, it's the NAPS Abundant Life Academy. Nice. And it started when one of our volunteers, every year we'd have a team of young people that would say, I want to take just a year off, you know? And, mm -hmm. and so every year we have a different team, just a year off. But this team, instead of traveling all overseas and, or going all over the country, they said, 
we want to go to the black belt. We want to serve in a region that's been forgotten. Yes. And as they were serving, they were helping in this school, and they saw that there were 12th graders that couldn't read or graduating at a second grade level. Wow. Students that were, were so far behind, mm. and they said, we have to start a school. Yes. And not just any type of school, but we want a school where the young people, this book, The Southern Work, mm -hmm. it says that the people in this area, the children, if they were taught, would go back and they would evangelize in a way that no other person wow. could. Yes. So that became the fire behind the school. Like we don't want them just to learn, we don't want children just to learn math or English mm -hmm. or that's good. It's a means for reaching souls. Yes. Mm -hmm. But we want them to know the importance of service. So like when it comes to the school, godly character is the most important achievement and, mm -hmm. and making sure that our children see the importance of love and service and, and, and they love, we, we love reading the Bible together. It's, it's our main textbook. And so this is one of, one of the main things. And uh, we have some different pictures mm -hmm. uh, because as the students come, they're in nature. Uh huh. Uh huh. <laughs> uh, the our classroom doesn't have walls for more than one reason. You'll see with the tornado. You know, uh, we're yeah. still working on our our, our building structure, <laughs> waiting for more carpenters. But the students do a lot of learning outside, and yeah. these children they 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 see God through nature. Mm -hmm. And then when it comes to reading the Bible, it's not just where we read it but we actually show them how the Bible is real. The kids are always asking, Miss Darla, is this real? This is real? This really happened? Yeah. Are you serious? You know, and they're, <laughs> yes. they, you know they, they never, they've seen all these movies, mm -hmm. but that's not real. Mm -hmm. But the word of God is real. And, and our, our students, there's a picture of, of Jade mm -hmm. actually each morning, they start out with devotion. They read to one another the, the Bible. The older students, mm -hmm. they read to the younger students. And that's, that's part of their learning. That's service, that's yeah. love, and that's the Bible. So yeah. um, those that's, are. That's, that's beautiful. And you know what? I love the fact that, you know, again, like you've, you've identified the need, right? How can you, you, how can they grow and sustain, learn to sustain themselves if you're not reading at a proficient level. Mm -hmm. And so affecting or impacting the, the literacy rate, raising that rate up mm -hmm. and teaching them about the gospel. I mean, that's, that's powerful. It's so crazy. Uh, just last week, we have a, for the first time ever, we mm -hmm. took a four-year-old student. Now, our school is a boarding school. So you have to understand that we don't always, we, we ha have never taken someone so young yeah. But we took in a four-year-old student, and just last week, I was talking to her family. They're not Seventh-day Adventists, but you don't have to be to love the Lord. And so as, she was, um, as I was talking to them, and I was telling them how their child was doing, they were like, oh, we already know. Every single day, our child comes home and she tells us every single Bible story. I know about Cain and Abel. I know about Noah's Ark now. I didn't know all these things. And now she, she teaches us all. And even the songs, her little cousin is four years old too. And she's taught her every single Genesis 1, 1 and all the songs that you're teaching them, she's teaching to others. That's wow. four years old. Wow. So now and she's learning about the Sabbath, <laughs> she's learning about the seventh day Sabbath. That's yeah, that's powerful. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it's, it's just a blessing to see that they're already grasping the importance of love mm -hmm. and sharing with others. It's not something we force on them, but when you have something so good, why would you be able to keep it to yourself? Yeah. So that's, that's yeah, good. Yeah, so it's a little evangelism taking place yes. out of a four-year-old. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. yes. And, and um, even one of the grandmas was telling me, she was like, I want Bible studies now Wow! Um, just because of what she's been seeing. That's beautiful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. And so, Tori, I want to come back to you because I, I want to continue down that, that medical, the gems, as you called it, mm -hmm. right? Gems. Yes. I want to continue down that because there was a, a testimony in there. Oh, yes. yes. About uh, one of our recent students. Mm -hmm. um, there's a video that we have for you that's going over her experience. She started out as a Mennonite. Oh, wow. And... Um, 
the Lord just led her down through various truths and now she's accepted the Sabbath and she's actually on the campus. Her and her husband are both in our gyms program. Wow. And uh, you'll hear her give, I think it's a great synopsis of what life is like in NAPS. Sometimes yeah. as we talk, it's like, okay, I think I get this, I think I get that. Yes. But she really gives a nice broad picture of what the organization is really about. Got you. Well, let's take a look at that right now. My name is Annette Conrad Milogo, and I just want to share how me and my family found the wonderful campus, NAPS, and all that they're doing here, the Southern work. I was, so I was a Mennonite, raised Mennonite, thought I was just fine. And then my first year of college, I encountered like something different. Actually, I met my husband at the same time and he was from a different country and he had a different way of praying, different way of praising, different way of eating, <laughs> different way of talking. And he loved Jesus so much. I was like, I've never, I've never met somebody who loves Jesus so much. I started on a journey to loving Jesus also in a way that I'd never understood before and it started with a very broken prayer lord help me to do what you want me to do i didn't know what it meant that's when jesus touched my heart with powerful truths like the sabbath and things that have just changed my life then we started looking up seventh day adventist writings and a friend gave us like, oh, if you listen to that guy, maybe you would like this lady's writings. So we started, he had listened to them before he even met me. But then after we got married, we started on this journey together. And so as we, God was purifying us little by little, we were able to really appreciate Ellen White's writings. And the way that it helped us in our spiritual growth, we couldn't believe it until we finally met some people at NAPS who were trying to do a lot of what Ellen White has, has recommended that we do. This place is busy doing what Jesus said to do, reaching out to the lost. It, everybody here is busy saving souls, whether they be souls in the community, whether they be the souls of the people who help on campus, whether they be the souls of patients who come to the clinic, of students at the school, whether they be the souls of donors who give, whether they be the souls of us who are living on campus, all of our souls are being saved in such a beautiful way. The work is going forward, step by step, soul by soul, and that is lovely lovely thing to be a part of and I'm very thankful that Jesus has brought me here and given me a purpose and a work to do. Now that's that's, that's a powerful testimony <laughs> that's a powerful testimony you can see how passionate she is about naps and and what she's learned about the Lord. Mm -hmm. Yes and that's really what I love about this experience is we don't just have the Lord doesn't just bless us just for us to say, hey, these are great blessings. Mm -hmm. But it's now, how can I reach a soul for the kingdom? Amen. Um, someone once told me, they said, you know, the feeding that we do is good, but eventually people will get hungry again. The clothing, all of those things, the buildings that we build will break. Mm -hmm. But it's the everlasting gospel that's yes. most important because that's the one thing that will last forever. Mm -hmm. So as we go seeking souls, seeking the lost, that's really what this whole thing is about. Yeah. Seeking the lost everywhere. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's what I love about this experience. Amen, amen. Now you both are serving as dorm parents, correct? Yes. yes. Okay. So, and this is for the boarding students at Naps Academy. So what are some testimonies that you've personally experienced? Wow. Um, there's so many testimonies in just the first few months. Uh, Jason, I'll tell you this. There's a dangerous prayer that every Christian should pray. Okay. And it's this <laughs> prayer. Lord, do whatever you have to do to save me. Oh. And that's a wonderful prayer. 
but it's dangerous because the Lord will take you up on it. Yeah. And he will say, all right, here's anything to save you. Mm -hmm. So uh, my wife and I, we've been married for 15 going on 16 years and um, we don't have any children, mm -hmm. but the Lord's going to do whatever he needs to do to save you. Yeah. And even in children, there's a salvation there. So uh, with the school, the school started, it's a boarding school. So mm -hmm. someone needs to be there to be with the students. And so we looked at each other and said, okay, they'll be in our home. So the kids come on into our home. Last year, wonderful experience. And you start to learn, okay, I thought I was ready for, you know, the kingdom, but uh, I still had some selfishness in me that the Lord <laughs> had to work out. Yeah, and he was yeah. using the students. Mm -hmm. See, when we talk about transformation, yes, there's a transformation in the students but there's a transformation in us as well. Wow. As you're active for the master, that's when he starts to really work on you yes. when you're going out. I think someone once said, the blessing is in the go. Yes. As you go, yes. God is gonna bless you, but he's gonna help mold and shape you into who he wants you to be. Yes. So with the students in this most recent year, we were going out to the community and uh, we were doing their applications. So we <laughs> sit down with the parents, we type in the applications, we're at this one house, we're like, oh, we're excited. These, these kids are gonna come to our school. We go in, we sit down, and the kids are jumping all over the place, chairs sliding around, yelling, chasing each other. Wow. So, what have we done? <laughs> <laughs> what did we just do? Yeah. Okay, so we start doing the application, and there's a question on there mm -hmm. that says, why, why do you want your child to come to Nala? So the mother thinks about it for a minute. She says, you know, I want my children to learn manners. Huh. And that was so powerful. It's like, but as I'm typing in, learn, man, a child yells from across the room, Ma, what's manners? <laughs> <laughs> I guess she was, he or she was about to find out. Right? Yes. <laughs> so then she says, well, I want them to learn, you know, good morals. Ma! What's morals? Wow. And so everything the mother is listing, this child is yelling out across from the room, what, what are these things? I don't mm -hmm. understand. So the kids come, they get accepted, and the first day was a day of prayer. <laughs> the second day was a day of prayer and fasting. He's talking about for his personal life. <laughs> gotcha. Because of gotcha. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And so the kids are there and you say things like, okay, let's gather around. And a kid looks me in the face and says, no, and starts heading towards the door like they're leaving. <laughs> Wait, no, this isn't what I signed uh, yes. up for. I wasn't ready for this. But the Lord was using them hmm. to change me. Yeah. See, it's fun to say we love the kids. Like, oh, I love the kids. They're great kids. But do you love the kids when they don't show that love back to you? Hmm. I love in 1 John 4 when it talks about hearing is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us. Yes. And so now I'm getting to actually have that love for these kids mm -hmm. because the Lord sat me down one night because I'm sitting in my bed 1 a.m. praying like, Lord, what, what are we going to do? You have to make a change. Yes. And the Lord said, well, Tori, do you really love them? Because mm -hmm. if you really love them, no matter what, you're gonna let my spirit work through you and show that love to them. Yeah. And love begets love. Mm -hmm. Over time, you see that transformation. The next week, wait a minute, are these the same kids that we had last week? What are, sitting down, please, yes ma'am, thank you. Yes. When can we read the Bible? We almost did, we almost forgot we can't, to read the Bible. We can't, we can't, we can't go to bed yet. We haven't, we haven't read our Bible <laughs> and we gotta pray. <laughs> wow, see, that's, week, that's incredible. I'm not saying month two. Yes. This was week two. Week two. And it wasn't a 12 step program. I couldn't sit down and say, okay, step one, you do this, mm -hmm. step two. Love begets love. Yes. So in every interaction, how can I love this child? And that's deep because there's so many spiritual applications there from, from what you just said. You know, when you think about that child, right? It's like us and our relationship with God. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, there, there may have been a time where we went astray. Mm -hmm. There may have been a time where we didn't understand that Christ was trying to pour out his love mm -hmm. on us and we weren't receiving it and we had to learn mm -hmm. <laughs> more about him. 
And as we did and we experienced that love and it's like, Lord, I want to spend time with you. Mm -hmm. That's, yeah, there's so many mm -hmm. spiritual lessons that you guys are, that's powerful. Mm -hmm. The Lord's been blessing. Wow. I'm just thankful for this opportunity. Yes. Uh, it takes us from mountains and valleys. And uh, the other blessing I guess in it is even with Jade and our older students, because mm -hmm. sometimes even though we're dorm parents, we're also monitoring other aspects of naps. And so we can't do everything. Mm -hmm. So our older students, that's the beautiful part of the process is they then are able to step in. Yeah. So in that picture you saw earlier, Jade was sitting there reading the Bible with them. Mm -hmm. So they're able to have worship and that forces them to mature as well because they have to fulfill that role of being an example to the next generation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's powerful. Darla, what's been your experience? Well, I, I, I just praise the Lord. I love children. I really do. Mm -hmm. um, but one thing that I really, I think that has touched me more than anything was right before Christmas, we saw the video where we, we went with this, to this community. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you could really see the poverty in the community, but this is an area where right behind the, it's just straight open sewage. It's the, the houses, some may not have doors all the way. It's a, mm -hmm. when we walked in there, the kids had no shoes, their whole, holy clothes. It felt like I was in another country yes. in yes. some of the poor uh, countries that we have been to. Mm -hmm. And so this past, um, right before Christmas time, I told the children, we want to, we want to do something special. And I showed them, um, I showed them actually a, an experience where Jade yes. had touched some lives when she was just a little girl. And they saw this video, you'll see it a little later, but they saw it and they said, you know what? We want to help these people too. Hmm. And they started, these are the same children. They said, I have toys. We can give them my toys. And, hmm. and what if, what if, I don't need all my clothes. I can give them some of my clothes, you know? And yes. So, this wasn't me asking them. That was just the love of God changing the heart. Mm -hmm. And I, I know they don't necessarily have all the things that they want, but that they would love in such a strong way to give of their own. They didn't say, can, can you buy some and we give that? No, yeah. they said they can have mine. And, and I, I think when I, as Tori said, it's, it's changing me. Mm -hmm. I thought I was, you know, ready. Jesus, come back soon. I can't, I can't deal with this anymore. And now I'm like, Lord, there's children out there crying. Mm -hmm. And that could be me. I know my, my family, I know how we came to know about truth. Yes. And if nobody had come for us, because I'm, I'm African-American, I'm from the South, that's my, that's my roots, but mm -hmm. somebody pulled my family out. Mm -hmm. So whenever now I'm working, I, I see my eyes in their eyes. Mm -hmm. They're not, they're not unteachable. Yeah. Just, they need someone just to take time and care. And the, the book, the Southern work, it says by Ellen White, it says that if they had the same opportunity, mm -hmm. they would go further. Mm -hmm. So that, that makes sense for why the enemy would attack them so greatly. Mm -hmm. And I see that. They're already, they, these are kids who, when I first met them, some of them couldn't even, they didn't know their whole name. They only, they only knew their, some of them, their nicknames. Wow. They didn't know, oh, that's my name. I had to, I had to teach them their names, yeah. let alone how to spell their names. And this goes up to, you know, nine-year-olds. So, but they're in school. Mm -hmm. So now they're at our school and they're reading, hey, that's the word Bible, the B-I-B-L, that's <laughs> yes. Jesus, you know, and they, they're, they're really learning. So I'm, the transformation, for me, it's showing that God loves them so much mm -hmm. that he will use even a four-year-old to make a huge difference. So. That's, that's yeah. beautiful. I've seen Jade. I'm going over here to Jade because she's, she's just engaged in this, right? So I, I've seen how Jade is very polite. Mm -hmm. She said, yes, sir, no, sir, and everything. We have uh, Jade's testimony, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, let's, let's take a look at Jade's testimony. Well, well before, is, is it, before we go to um, showing the video, I want Jade, if you can, just share a little bit of how you got started. Um, with like, how did you learn about naps just a bit and, and how you got started? 
Well, so how I got started was the Boys and Girls Club. You saw the picture in the earlier hour where I w they went to the Boys and Girls Club and they mm -hmm. did a program and where I learned the creation, how God made the earth and Noah Ark and how like he was preparing people to flood the earth and all that good stuff. And also, Naps, the summer after that, they started a summer camp. So my older brother, my brother Prince, he went to the summer camp because, you know, I was young. I was like five years old. So he went to the summer camp and then, you know, they did applications to start up the school. Mm -hmm. So my mama applied me so I can learn more because my mom is like a preacher type. Okay. Yeah, so she, you know, teaches me about God. Like, I know a little bit about God, but not, like, not too much. So mm -hmm. able to go to the NAP school, I get to learn more and how, like, you know, history and, like, the Bible is my history textbook. Like, if I want to read history, I could just go to the Bible and all the drama and stuff. So that's also a great opportunity. That's, that's beautiful, Jade. That's beautiful. Yes. Thank you for setting that up, too, by the way. Yes. Let's take a look at that video. Let's check that out. Precious. Jade, you know, I've heard that you've been uh, on mission trips. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Yes, it's been a blessing to go on different missions with NAPS to learn and to impact other kids and teach them what I have been learning at the NAPS school. Mm -hmm. And some of the things that NAPS were able to teach you is how to do other academic stuff, like secretary. So there's this one picture of doing secretary to like help get the presentations for the churches and school programs and all that good stuff and you know you know you can get to do other opportunities like help homeless people feed homeless people so there's also this other picture of where I'm help cooking for a woman's shelter and just know these women don't have homes or they are hungry Mm -hmm. So they're not like they don't have show, like homes to go to. So it's also been a blessing to help those who are in need. Yeah. And also in the video, it just reminds me of how like even in other countries, I still can help by letting like give what I have got to NAP so they can help other people. Mm -hmm. And so it's been a real blessing. Mm -hmm. That is a blessing. You know what, Jade? I think you just need to get your resume together, <laughs> fill out an application and see us in a few years. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yeah. that, that's great. I love your heart for the Lord and the, your heart for service. Mm -hmm. that, that's incredible. And mm -hmm. one thing about the school is the students, they, they do vocational as well. And so, Jade, can you share um, what is your, what, what do you help with at the school and um, she has, each of the students have different jobs that they assist with. So the job that I assist with is clinic. So okay. I want to be a, doc, a pediatrician when I grow up. So I go with Dr. Marlow. This is a picture of me going to work with Dr. Marlow to help, nice. you know, to learn what I can so I can be advanced and learn and hope to learn more yes. when I grow so older. What, what made you decide to go down that path? Well, a lot of sick people and 
you know, COVID really like, you know, just hit me because, you know, some people are like taking this other stuff, but you know, they're still getting, you know, tested positive. They're also getting sick and some people are dying of COVID. Yeah. So me learning the stuff that I can and able to share out with the world is able to help other people from, you know, sparing their lives and also help with the people who are sick. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. And then the most important objective of the NAPS school mm -hmm. is sealing the deal. Like we want each of our children, each of our students to leave with that godly character. And one of our highest days, I mean, there wasn't a dry eye in the place. Mm -hmm. um, the day that we, we had our, a week of prayer and when the appeal was made, the majority of the school stood up and said they wanted to not just give their hearts to Christ, but they wanted to show it through baptism. Wow. And Jade was one of those, uh, one of those students. And we have a, um, a oh, wow. picture of her being baptized by, um, by one of our, our teachers, our chaplain who had worked, you know, he's a, that's like, it was just bringing it all together. Yes. And so I'm, I'm just, I know that her heart is sealed for the Lord and mm -hmm. she has touched not just our lives, but even the lives of her family. Amen. So. Amen. That's, that's powerful. I don't have kids either, but if I did, I don't know, I, I might have to send them to the nap school. <laughs> this, is, this is incredible. There's a lot of great work taking place out there for sure. Now, you know, there's been a, a devastating uh, I guess, natural disaster that took place that impacted NAPS. Mm -hmm. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. Um, just a little bit short of a year ago um, in March of 2020, just before we were about to embark on our evangelistic series, <laughs> we actually, um, our mm -hmm. prophecy se seminar, we were actually we're going to start the Sabbath afternoon. Thursday, tornado came through. Wow. We know it was from the devil. Oh, he, yeah. he definitely did not like what we were about to do. And then it wasn't even that because uh, maybe two weeks before that, mm -hmm. we had a week of prayer for the community. So, you know, we were moving in the community yes. and it just was just one of those things that the devil says, I'm going to wreak some havoc. Mm -hmm. And we know that even here in Kentucky, in Kentucky and Tennessee, they just went through their disaster. Yeah. And our hearts are with them because we understand the struggles in even getting rebuilt. Mm -hmm. But what, what Satan sometimes meant for harm, God meant for greater good. Mm -hmm. Yes. You see, um, you know, we can look, um, we have a video of how it, the what the days after the tornado yeah. was so you can actually see so people can remember because mm -hmm. um, we have our share that message here yeah and we can show that and you will see how completely we had lost more a total of five buildings wow, wow. but god was so good mm -hmm. his hands of protection was over us because all the buildings were our dormitory at that mo at that time okay did not get touched so no, no personal items were lost. Maybe the, the things in the schools, books, and actually it wasn't even fully lost because after it took off the roof, we were able to retrieve the items from most of the items from that school building wow. and put place it in our weir food warehouse. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And it's, it's just that God, is, you, if should I just go into the testimony of how even us being protected in that yes. storm because we saw it the the alert coming in and we ran, we gathered everyone on campus, mm -hmm. ran into the wellness center building, our safe place. Yes. And we were just huddled between two bathrooms, wow. which is our more in most interior rooms. And the kids were praying, the kids were singing, we were all praying and it came through quickly. But when we came out, the destruction. Wow. How much time do you think um, from the time you saw the warning to the time you were like, okay, we've got to get everybody you know, in a safe place, and then the tornado hit. How much time, if you had to guess? Well, um, there's a couple of timeline because at least the day before we knew we were gonna have significant okay. weather. Mm -hmm. So the day off, we were like, uh, light, 
work. We weren't really work. We were, were just like yeah. on edge. Yes. But the moment from getting the, oh yes, there is mm -hmm. something spinning mm -hmm. to getting everyone was not even 20 minutes. Wow. So we had a roughly about 20 minutes to get everyone into safe area. Wow. Until um, then when it passed over. Mm -hmm. So I just recalled when the alarm or, or emergency signal says, warning, tornado warning, tornado in, in your area. Yes. I was at one end of the campus, jumped in the truck, sped down, blowing horns, gathering everyone, and then just everyone just moving quickly. Mm -hmm. And it was just, after that, as we got in, mm. within not even two to th five minutes, it's mm. passing right over. Wow. Wow. I mean, when you look at that damage, mm -hmm. and I sit here and I look at you we all the video. sitting here, yeah. mm -hmm. I'm just amazed at God's hand of protection over you. Mm -hmm. In fact, let's take a look at the damage that that tornado uh, did. Let's take a look at that now. That is truly a miracle yes. that you survived that. Um, are you still currently rebuilding from, from that wreckage? Yes, we are currently rebuilding. The Lord has um, blessed us mm -hmm. where we have actually restored the, f the hull and the framing of okay. all of those buildings that have been taken down. But, you know, they're saying the devil is in the detail. We are now moving into the interior work where all the, in, uh. the detail work has to be done. Mm -hmm. One of the things that we are, especially because of COVID, we are lacking even um, help, carpenters, we need carpenters. Okay. You know, it's a shortage of workers out there. Okay. Um, we need carpenters that can come and put their hands and give their professional time mm -hmm. to be able to help with that. So we, we are definitely in the rebuilding phase and we have a picture of what we're, where we are back to, um, where God has blessed us in bringing us back to because even those buildings that were taken down, some of them are even expanded a little bit because mm -hmm. God knew that he just he had to take those smaller buildings down yes. so we can bring more people in yes to be able to finish this work amen because we he wants us to take us home amen and we know that everything just seems to be accelerating lately in our world and we know that god wants us to move yeah and so that's and that's because even out of this destruction mm -hmm. birth the expansion into different counties we have different, about five different locations that are where setting up homes. We have a yeah. place in Noxopeda, Mississippi. We will have a picture of that, mm -hmm. um, of that where we can actually, but you know, what was so good about the rebuilding portion of this, yeah, this mm -hmm. is Noxopeda in Mississippi. The, what it was the, the real testimony in this is that 
amount of help that came, the testimonies yeah. that came through. Yes. You know, we had a church from Texas, um, a ba Baptist church, you know, um, Bethel's family. Okay. Who have supported the ministry because they like what NAPS does, especially as black young. They came with a group, not they, they sent money. Mm -hmm. They sent a trailer truck with supplies. And then they came with their self. Wow. wow. To help rebuild. Uh -huh. Then we had the family that was mentioned earlier, the McElroy. They brought their church. Yeah. <laughs> the whole Meridian Seventh-day Adventist church came out in nice. full force. Men coming with chainsaws, yes. different things, tearing walls down, mm -hmm. bringing. And it was just such a good thing of Christian unity in a time when it was needed, yes. no matter what. And it was just it was just so wonderful to see the body of Christ coming mm -hmm. together to be able to serve and just as this is not going to stop you guys from ministering because we yeah. realize that the work that you're doing and we want you to continue. Yes, yes. And it's, it's just a beautiful... So I, I want to know because since, I mean, you're still in this rebuilding process, mm -hmm. you're still in this rebuilding phase and that, that's such a blessing that they, they came, they gave of their resources, they gave of their time and all of that stuff to help. But I know that you need more resources and I know that you need more people to volunteer their time. And perhaps there's somebody that's out there that's listening to this or watching this and they're saying, you know, I want to support the wonderful ministry of NAPS. I want to support what NAPS is doing. How can they get in touch with you? Mm -hmm. Well, um, you, first of all, you can call. Mm -hmm. uh, our number is, I, I think they're actually going to put it on the screen, but our number is 256-262-7712. Mm -hmm. uh, you can call, we pick up, leave a message if we don't assume that we are on the battle for the <laughs> Lord. Yes. Um, but when you call, and even when people call, sometimes they may need support themselves like mm -hmm. prayer. Mm -hmm. A lot of our, our supporters Sometimes they're going through a hard time. So even if you, you know, just need a little prayer, you yeah. know, you want to support, but you need support, you know. Yes. Um, and good. then also there's our website. Mm -hmm. uh, you can go to napsglobal.org uh, or you can visit, um, just send an email, naps at napsglobal.org. <laughs> oh, so, uh, sure. yeah, so there's many different ways you can contact us mm -hmm. and, um, and you can reach us that way. Yes. yes. All right. Yes. Well, what are some other testimonies that you can share? Because I know you have well, some dark. I was going to, one of the big things while he was talking, yes. I, was, I was just bursting at the seams because I think it's so powerful how God took the tornado. See, when he describes it just a little bit, mm -hmm. it reminds me of the times we're living in now. Mm -hmm. Yes. He said, well, beforehand there were some warnings, you know, we mm -hmm. had been told that a storm is coming. And so preparations were made and I'm like, man, if we had not prepared, say we had just gone about or not even been uh, attuned our ear to the warning, yes. then the story wouldn't have been the same. Hmm. Part of being saved had to do with listening to the warning. And I think that right now we're, there's warnings all around us. Amen. Jesus is coming back soon. Mm -hmm. He has given us one major commission go. Yes. More than ever, like, I, I think it's a time of looking, are, are we responding to the warning? Mm -hmm. Are we heeding the call to go? Are, or will we miss out on this, uh, this salvation? And the powerful thing too, is after, after the storm, I remember, because all the students, you can imagine the fear during it. Mm -hmm. But it says, perfect love knows no fear. And I remember when they walked out from where we were, our safe spot in these, you know, our safe spot, their hands lifted up in praise to God. Mm. Mm. They were praising mm. God for support. They saw the destruction. Yes. But they knew that God had spared their life. Mm -hmm. Why would God spare their life unless it was to reach one more? There was a whole region of this country. Mm -hmm. There are so many people that are crying for help. Yeah. And just like Lisa was saying earlier, when you go to the houses, mm -hmm. there's sometimes where the children, they mm -hmm. just grab hold of you. 
and you know they haven't gotten a hug and they haven't had someone to care. Yes. Their parents are still under like their own form of slavery. Mm -hmm. And these are kids that are just saying, can you care? Yes. And I'm just touched that we're able to help. But the hard part is we are only few. Mm -hmm. There are so many children that are calling for help. Yes. How many people, see, with NAPS, we, we pray for laborers. We had an all night, you know, like, we just, we always praying. Uh -huh. And I remember we were praying, <laughs> we were praying, um, we had a prayer, like a prayer day and fasting. And right after we had finished praying, we got news that God had just sent, a, like, a seven day at Venice doctor to the area. Yeah. Then we, we were praying again, Lord, send laborers. And then a nurse appeared. But sometimes I found myself getting frustrated because see right now, mm -hmm. even though we do not have all the hands that we need, we are pushing forward. If the rocks have to cry out, then so be it. But right now we have, we have five different sites. Yes. As, as he pointed out with Noxipeda, th this is an area, the building is built. Mm. It's waiting. The, the people are hungry. Mm -hmm. they're, they're just, they said, please come and help. We just need more hands. Yes. And so I am pleading with you. There will be, n you'll have no regrets. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when my husband and I left our, you know, our paying high, you know, like yeah. nice jobs, we have lacked for nothing. God has given us everything we need. That's beautiful. He just works it out. And in the same way, I'm just encouraging people right now. Like, yes. look, see how, how you can help, you know. Yeah. If, if it's not with naps, mm -hmm. then do it where you are. Yes. Mm -hmm. But God has commissioned us to go. Yes. Love him enough to obey. Yes. And, um, and so that's my, that's, Really, my, my plea, like, yes. just love. There's another jade. Mm -hmm. There's another jade right out there. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just asking for. Amen. Amen. That's powerful. Tori, what's on your heart? Um, it's funny, as you were talking, I was thinking, man, uh, there may be someone out there who just feels inadequate. Mm -hmm. uh, I know for me, growing up, I was never the singer. I was never the preacher. And so... I, I never thought, well, how could I reach this child, these children that are out there? Mm -hmm. But the beautiful part of this ministry is we do in the field training. <laughs> so it's where you're actively learning with us as we go through the process. So like Darla said, in Nuxipeda, we have the building built. And so it may be intimidating to someone saying, uh, I don't know how to, well, that's where Jim's comes in. Mm -hmm. Our medical missionary program, what they do is we take people we give you the books, we give you the practicum where you're going out with the doctor, mm -hmm. learning all these things. And now at the end of this time, we have a place for you to be. Yeah. So that way at the end, it's not where you think, well, now I have this training, what do I do? Mm -hmm. No, yes. this is what, what you, you do. do. And it's a community that you've been involved in mm -hmm. already. Mm -hmm. So you've already built up the relationship, the connections are there. Mm -hmm. And now you just move on into the next phase, yeah. which takes us hopefully to heaven. Yeah. Amen. Oh, that's, that's beautiful. <laughs> that is beautiful. How important would you say it is for you to stay connected? Because I, I, I heard that you pray a lot. How important would you say that it is to stay connected and stay in the word of God doing what you do? It's mm. top, mm -hmm. top most, because when you hit those discouragements, Mm -hmm. When those tornadoes are hitting, when those sirens are going off, when you have these other trials, it's the faith that you've built on already Amen. that's able, at least for me, to give me the encouragement to say, okay, Lord, I may not like this situation, but I trust your hand. Amen. And God has never failed me on that one. It's like a superpower. Prayer allows you to see the unseen. Mm -hmm. Yes. Amen. Amen. And that's so beautiful because, you know, you're learning more and more each day, I'm sure, and you're applying that, you're sharing that. And I look at Jade again and just what she's learned and what she's brought as well. And so it's, it's inspiring. So thank you for answering the calling that God has placed on your life. Can't believe we're just about out of time. Answer the calling that God has placed on your life and we'll see you next time. God bless you.